Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, we're going to be creating a brand new XAIM layout. And we're going to be doing this for the game Black Ops 3 on the Xbox One console. Now, before we begin, um, we've been getting some reports of users saying that they're importing layouts and that they're getting weird, um, laggy or, or jerky feeling um, mouse movements when, when things were, were working well in the past. Now, um, I personally do not know exactly what's causing this. It could be um, any any number of uh, specific conditions. It could be down to uh, Microsoft updates. Um, <laughs> again, I um, I personally have no idea, but I do um, I do know the solution for this. We have the Cronus Scrubber program that you can download from the uh, the download section of the forums or the website rather. Is as soon as you open it, you'll get a little pop-up box stating that the uh, the software will completely remove any data related to the Cronus Pro from your system, and it asks if you're sure you want to do this, and of course you're going to tell it yes. As you see, the next box says scrubbing completed. Now, what it has done is it has gone through and completely erased all of the previous versions of Cronus Pro. So now we'll go back to the download section of the website and we'll download the Cronus Pro software suite and we'll get XAIM installed and we'll go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and get all that downloaded and fade over to the next clip so y'all aren't bored with just watching me navigate through my web browser. Alright, so once we've got Cronus Pro downloaded once again and we have our device authorized to the console of our choice, um, we can go ahead and re-download XAIM and go into the plugin. Now, before we do that, I want to point out a couple of things. Since I'm playing on the Xbox One, I've removed the batteries from the back of my controller, because if I have them in and I disconnect the controller, it's going to try to resync to the console, but wirelessly, and um, that's going to, uh, to block the Cronus from, from being able to work. Now, obviously, since we're trying to use the Cronus, we do not want that to happen, so just take your batteries out. Now, the next thing that we need to do is go into your in-game settings and go into the options, go into the controls or wherever your sensitivity settings are and you're going to want to raise this all the way to the maximum value. Now once you have that done you can go ahead and exit out of everything and unplug your controller. Now the reason why we unplug our controller is because if you notice if I open up the device monitor the right x-axis and right y-axis, neither of them are reading at zero. If I move this around, you see now they're reading at, well, the x-axis is reading at zero and the y-axis is reading at a different value from before, but they're, they're both, you know, reading at not, you know, the, the values of where it sets every time you release are inconsistent. So if you move it around and it's setting at a negative two and a negative five, when you go to move your mouse, your mouse is going to start moving at the negative 2 and negative 6. You know, you can see that it just nudged another spot just sitting on the table. And your um, your, your mouse movement is, is, isn't going to be, be good at all. Because um, you're essentially starting off-center from the middle of your circle. So you're, you're essentially playing with a crooked joystick all the time and only moving it X amount of distance off to one side and less to the other. So if you notice, once I unplug this, both of the axes read zero, and now any slight movement of the mouse will be a dead center and start from there. So we can go ahead and set our controller aside. <clears throat> Exit out of that. And we'll open up XAIM. Now here, since we're creating a whole new layout, we'll get a new empty layout. And you'll want to name this, well, I mean, really, you can name this whatever you like, but I personally like to name mine the game title and then match it to the console. So, Black Ops 3 for the Xbox One. Actually, let's go ahead, capital O, put a space there, make it a little bit easier to read. There we go, I like that. Okay, so as soon as we create the layout, if you notice, there's a PlayStation 3 controller with all these little white boxes over the buttons and the thumbstick directions and the D-pad. Um, obviously, these boxes are corresponding to the buttons that they're laid over. 
Um, since I'm playing on an Xbox One, I don't want to be using the PlayStation 3 controller. I'm going to switch this over to, uh, to match the console that I'm using. So I'm going to go under Layout Options, select Controller, and I'm going to find the controller that corresponds to my console, which again is the Xbox One, and it's switched controllers for me. <clears throat> now, back to these, uh, these white boxes. If you notice on the, uh, the triggers here we have boxes, again over all the buttons we have boxes, over the home button. Now to assign these to the corresponding button, you just want to right click the box and it will bring up this little drop down menu and if you want to, you know, if you want a keyboard key to, uh, to activate the, uh, the controller button, you'll select keystroke if you want to use your mouse button, in this case I do because the, uh, the right trigger it generally fires your gun and I want that to be my left click which is indeed a mouse button so we'll uh, we'll select mouse button press a key and as you can see that button one of the mouse is programmed to the uh, the right trigger now the same for the left trigger but I want that to be the right mouse button so I can go ahead and do that mouse button and there we go see it's it's really really quick and easy to assign your your mouse buttons over so I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, the, the thumbstick here in the D-pad and um, whenever I'm going over the face buttons I like to assign more than one keyboard key to activate the same button and uh, I'll be showing you all how to do that shortly. So to move up, let's go up, down, left, right, sprint is shift, now there's left bumper, right bumper. Uh, where's the home key? There it is. Escape. Backspace. Um, we want this to be the D-pad. We'll use the arrow keys for that. Okay, so you see how quick I was able to sit there and, and get all of those assigned to what I want? Now, the right thumbstick, generally this is our, um, you know, our, our in-game look. So we want that to be our mouse movement. This is, um, it's basically the same, you just select a different option in the drop down menu. So since we want to look up on the thumbstick, we want our mouse to move up to activate look on the thumb, look up on the thumbstick rather. We'll select mouse up. Looking down, we'll select mouse down. Right click again, mouse left. Right click the box and then mouse right. Now what I've done is each of these directions of the mouse moves the thumbstick in that direction. So moving the mouse left moves it left, moving the mouse right moves it right, etc. It's, uh, it's pretty simple. Now for the melee button, I like to use the V key down here. For jump, I like to use the space bar. For crouch, this is one of the buttons that I like to use two keys for. So I'm going to go ahead and program the keystroke, which is C. And then, since I want to program a second button to the same uh, controller option, I'll right click again and I'll go into the more box. If you notice, I now have 10 of these white boxes that all correspond to button B. Now, as you can see, I have the first, uh, the first key that I programmed, which is C, and now I want to program this, uh, this mouse button down here on my mouse. That way, if I'm, um, if, if I'm doing something with my thumb, Say if I'm uh, if I'm trying to melee and then I want to crouch real quick, I won't have to bounce back and forth through keys. I can simply just hit it with my right thumb. I'll just select an empty box, click mouse button, click the button that I want to use, and now as you can see, I have both of these programmed to the back uh, the B key rather. You know that you have more than one uh, key uh, key press or mouse button assigned to the same controller button whenever you see a little green bar underneath the button here. Now Y is switching weapons. I like to use mouse wheel up for that. But again, if I have to hold the button down for something, I like to have a keyboard key. So we'll go under more, keystroke, and I'll press Y. And then to reload, I like to use R. And again, I like to have um, my, uh, my scroll wheel down to, to reload because I can get a little bit faster of a, uh, a reload reflex on that. So we'll go back into more and then mouse wheel down. And now I have two, you know, two key presses assigned to both activate the X button on my controller. Now that's the uh, the easy part. So now we're going to go into mapping our mouse settings. To do so, we'll go back into the layout options, 
and we'll select mouse settings. The, uh, the first thing that we need to change in here is our dead zone. If you notice it loads up with a default dead zone of 20. The, uh, the reason why it's at 20 is because 20 is the lowest, well it's generally the lowest uh, input value from the controller that the game will see and register movement with. So with a dead zone of 20 we can uh, we can circle test that to verify that it's moving around. Now I know in the uh, the manuals and such it, it tells you to use a rectangle shaped dead zone and to test one axis at a time but since this is a, uh, a, a more advanced video I'm going to be going over how I personally set my dead zone because again like I was stating before you know that it's going to be around 20 um, for, for the minimum number that you want to use and you're going to run the circle test to see that it's indeed moving around in a circle. Now I'm sure most people can see a, a circle pattern of, of movement. So we'll, we'll go ahead and just leave the dead zone shape to eclipse. We'll leave that at 20 and then we'll run our circle test. Now um, actually I, I, I forgot the, uh, the most important part of setting up your entire layout actually. It's, it's the mouse DPI. Now you need to match the mouse DPI to what your mouse uses. As you can see the default number here is 800. My mouse uses a 1600 DPI, that's 1600. So having this set at 800 would have my mouse feeling like way way too slow because it takes this number and then it applies a, a, um, a complicated algorithm to apply all of these values and convert that over to your thumbstick movement. So this needs to match your mouse so it does indeed work one-to-one -one with your, your mouse. So we'll go ahead and change this to 1600 and we'll leave it there. Now say, um, say since my mouse is 1600 DPI, if I were to leave that at 800 DPI, it would feel um, way too fast because it's looking for a mouse that's sending half the amount of movement that this one is. So it's essentially, instead of reading one movement, one movement, one movement, and applying that over, it's reading double the amount of movement in the same amount of time, so it's going to be way too sensitive. And um, if your mouse, say you're running an 800 DPI mouse, and you set this to a number that's higher than that, your mouse is going to feel really slow and laggy. So you, you really need to match the mouse DPI to what your mouse uses. Okay, so again, we'll go ahead and enable the circle test. If you notice, I put the speed to 1 and the radius to 0. The speed really doesn't matter, that's just how fast it moves around in the circle. I personally like leaving this around 20 or so. And then you'll want to move the radius to 1. If I can get it there, there we go. And this is the slightest amount of movement that the, um, that the Cronus will see and, and convert over to stick movement. So, meaning you're, the slightest hand nudge that you have will read 20 of the dead zone so that way when you move your hand one value basically it starts at 20 if you increase the dead zone one on your hand would be say um, well here, I'll just show you real quick say I increase the dead zone to 30 moving your hand a value of one would equal 30 on the controller well it would start at 30 on the controller rather so as you can see you get a much wider circle um, if I increase this over to say 70 now we're going to have a huge circle. <laughs> um, so again, you, you want to have this as low as possible. That way the slightest bit of hand movement applies the slightest bit of in-game look. Um, Alright, so now that we have our dead zone set, because again, you can circle test and you can see that it's moving the slightest amount, we can go on and set our smoothness. Now smoothness can be thought of of exactly how it sounds of how smooth your, your mouse moves. Now if you have this value set to zero, it's not going to be smooth at all, it's going to be, be really jerky, um, but it's going to be really, really uh, responsive, you know, I, I guess would be a, uh, the, the best word to put it. Um, if you raise this all the way to the highest value, yeah sure your mouse is going to be super smooth, but since you're, you're smoothing out the movements, you're, you're going to get a really bad, laggy feel. So essentially you need to have this um, as, as high as you can get it to have your mouse feeling s as smooth as possible, but low enough to where it, it's not causing you any um, in-game lag. 
And again, all of these settings vary by game. It's going to vary slightly uh, by your computer. And, um, you know, you're, you're, even if you were to copy and paste all of my settings over, if you were to use them on your computer, play for a little bit, hop on my computer, play for a little bit, it would feel slightly different just because we have different computers, you know? <laughs> so um, you're going to want to adjust this accordingly. I personally like to start around 20 because I know that'll be moderately smooth but not too smooth and then from there I can either add to it or subtract uh, subtract from it and then um, the acceleration and the sensitivity now both of these fall hand in hand sensitivity is obviously how sensitive the uh, the movements are and the acceleration is the one that's a, uh, a little bit more tricky now this could be thought of of um, basically how fast the uh, the thumbstick moves with how fast your hand moves so if you have no acceleration it doesn't matter how fast you move your hand your in-game character is always going to look the same speed if you have too much acceleration the slightest um like the the slightest variant in, in speed of of your your mouse will cause a much more dramatic uh, movement in in game so even though it, it looks like I'm moving my hand at a constant speed even though it's slightly um, slowing down and speeding up it's gonna be you know moving your joystick more and less in game well what the console thinks is the joystick rather so um, it's this is generally set at one again you want to have the acceleration as you know I don't want to say as low as possible but you want to have the acceleration to where it, it feels where your hand is moving slow and if you move your hand you know, if your hand is moving slow your in-game character moves slow and as you speed your hand up your in-game character look speeds up as you you move your hand faster you know he accelerates as you accelerate your hand if if that makes any sense so to get started we'll go ahead and set the sensitivity um, I like to start about 18 sensitivity now this is slightly above halfway as you can see um, the midpoint would be 15 because the maximum you can go to is 30 here so again we'll go back to 18 sensitivity and then I like to start around uh, let's see 0 point no oh, if I could type here I'm sorry 0 0.150 there we go now that'll give me a pretty decent amount of sensitivity and a little bit of acceleration so for the most part my mouth should be moving the same speed unless I like really speed my hand up to look corner um, so to get to test this all we'll do is hit OK here and we'll enter capture mode and we'll move our hand around as you can see moving my hand slow actually works really well but um if I wanted to turn a corner I would never be able to do that and if you notice in the uh, the XAM plugin window the little green bar on the um, I'm not even sure what to call that there it basically just measures the amount of input that's being sent to the stick it, it doesn't even reach halfway so I know that I'm not I'm hardly putting any um, thumbstick movement or the game thinks that I'm hardly moving the thumbstick so to counter that I'll need more acceleration so let's go ahead and raise this a little bit. Uh, we'll go ahead and raise it up to 200. Well, 0 0.2. We'll leave the sensitivity the same because, again, it's about as sensitive as we want. We just want to be able to move the mouse faster and turn faster. Okay, that's a little bit better. Let's move around here. Yeah, we definitely need some more acceleration. So, let's add, let's go up to 0 0.250 and we'll leave the sensitivity there. Alright, as you can see the slow hand movement is moving a little bit faster because it's picking up the, um, you know, the, uh, the different speeds of which my hand's moving. And I'm able to look a corner a lot better. Let's see, see him turn a corner. But I still, I, uh, I feel like I have to move my hand way too fast to, to pull around that corner. So um, let's go ahead and raise this up to 350. Go 
hit OK, enter capture mode. Oh, there we go, that's much better. But, okay, let's see. The fast hand movements are much more responsive. As you can see, I can turn a corner, I can 180, um, run around this pillar. Everything's good, but now if I'm trying to aim, it looks a little bit jerky. So what I think to do, what I think I'll do to counter that is lay off of the acceleration a hair and start adding more to the sensitivity. Because if you leave the acceleration the same and you raise the sensitivity, your acceleration value is seeing a much more sensitive mouse and it'll be applying this value um, more dramatically. So let's lower this just a little bit. Um, lower it down to 320 and I want to raise this up to a 21 sensitivity and let's see how that feels all right so that feels a little bit better um I think I'm gonna have to lower that the uh, the acceleration some more, but I'm gonna leave the uh, the sensitivity there. Let's go ahead and drop this to 305. Leave the sensitivity alone and see how that feels. Oh yeah, it's definitely pretty responsive. The uh, the turning oh. Turning's a little bit better, and it's the uh, the acceleration needs to be turned some because it's not so predictable. It's um, my the sensitivity is up high enough to where the uh, the differences in speed with of my hand is um, applying a more dramatic value to the uh, to the end game thumbstick. So let's go ahead and lower this down to say 290. Okay, I can still turn a corner if I need to. And moving my hand slow is moving the character slow. Awesome. Alright. Alright, so once we're here, we're ready to start really fine tuning this layout. Now, what I mean by here is where it feels okay to you where, where it feels pretty good but it's not exactly where you want it now this is where you really go through and start nitpicking the heck out of your settings now I know the acceleration is just slightly too much for my taste so I'm gonna lower this down um, just one notch we'll lower it to 280 and we're gonna leave the sensitivity there and we'll move it real quick run real quick, we'll turn a corner, turn a corner, and what you're going to want to do is how, in your mind, you're going to want to turn, where you, you're going to want to move your hand where you think that you should be, um, say like, okay, I think if I move my hand X amount of distance at X amount of speed, I should look 90 degrees to the right, and then move your hand what you think should look you 90 degrees to the right. So I think that this should look me 90 degrees to the right. As you can see, I overshot a little bit. Now, the reason why I overshot is because I either moved my hand too quickly or I moved it too far. So to counter that, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the acceleration just a hair. That way it, it um, you know, the, the speed stays more constant, but I'm gonna raise the sensitivity up just a little bit. That way I don't lose any of my um, response, but I'm able to get a more um, steady speed when, when trying to look quickly. So we'll go ahead and enter that again. Oh, see? I turned a perfect 90 degrees. 45 was good. Run around here. There we go. Let's go in this doorway. Oh, didn't quite get it that, on that one here and actually I think this is about where I want it all right now we need to go back 
to, um, not necessarily step one, but one of the first steps that we did, and that's adjusting the smoothness. Now, if you recall, um, you want to have this where it's a high enough value that your mouse feels smooth, but if you have it too high, it's going to feel laggy, so you want it to be a low enough value to where it's still responsive, but having it too low, it's going to feel choppy. Um, I Now, some people, they'll... It, I've seen setups made with zero smoothness. I've personally made setups with zero smoothness and they work great. All this, um, you know, comes under personal preference with how you like your mouse to feel. So I personally, I'm going to raise this up to 26 and see how my response time feels. As you can see, my slow, precise movements are much more precise. I'm able to get the slightest little nudge over. And I'm really not feeling any lag. But now back to what I was saying earlier, where if you have way too much, let's go ahead and make note, this value was 26. If I raise this all the way up to 99, where it's as smooth as it can be, look how smooth the mouse is. But now, if I move, I notice that there's like, a split second in between when I physically feel the mouse move on my mouse pad to when I see the in-game character move. But look how smooth that is. As you can see it's super smooth. But again it's causing that little bit of lag. So we'll lower this back down to the 26 that I had it at earlier and I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. Now the next thing that we like to do is test our profile. So I'm going to go ahead and head over into a multiplayer match, record a little bit of gameplay, and um, show you all some, some kills using the, the new layout that we just created together. So I'll see you all shortly. CXD spotted. Alright, so I hope this video has helped give you a better understanding of how to use the XAIM plugin and how to create a new mouse layout. Now, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, like this video if you've liked it, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to view more of my videos.